So the first thing to do when setting up for some gel electrophoresis is we need to make our gels. We get this form and this comb. You can see the comb has uh, teeth and these teeth are, are what we use to make the indents in the gel that we pet the food dye into. We've got two options, you've got small teeth and some big teeth. We're going to use the big teeth. So we're going to put these at one end of our gel mold and then use these triangle gates to make the other end of the mold. This is so that the molten agar doesn't just run out all over the bench. Now I have some agar I've made up. This is 2% agar made with a 0.2% sodium bicarbonate buffer solution. Uh, this has been heated up and allowed to cool to about 60 degrees. I'm just going to pour it into my gel mold so that the teeth are in it, but only just. You don't want to overfill it. Gel is set, nice and cool, nice and solid. So we're ready for some gel electrophoresis. We need to take out the two ends and the comb so that all that's left in this is gel. So just give it a little, a little wiggle. You don't want to break the agar. You don't want to break that seal between the end and the agar. And then just pull it up gently, take out one side, same on the other side, just give it a little wiggle, try and break the seal between the agar gel and the end, and just a gentle pull upwards. And the comb, same idea, we're very careful not to break the agar or introduce cracks into the agar, so just a really gentle little wiggle and then pull it straight up and out. Okay. So now we have an agar gel made with our sodium bicarbonate buffer. We're going to load this gel into our electrophoresis chamber. Now it's important that we put the holes that we've made in the gel at the right end because when we introduce an electrical current all of our food dye is going to want to move in one direction and if we put it in the wrong way around it'll just move off the end of the gel and into your buffer solution. So we need to place this in our electrophoresis chamber with the wells next to the black end. So just pop it in there. Okay. Now we need to fill our chamber up with our buffer solution. So it's the same buffer that we used to make our gel. I like to fill up one end. And then fill up the other end. And you just want it in a thin layer over the top. As thin as you can possibly make it. Okay. It's a little more on this side. Get a little wiggle. Just make sure there's no bubbles inside the wells in your gel. Okay, we have these 
little micro pipettes. They are pretty simple, they don't do anything fancy. Just click the button in and out to pull up your sample into the pipette tip and then just push it out in once to push your sample out. So we're going to load up our food dye mixtures into the wells in our gel. And just keep a note of which dye you're putting into each well. So click in and out. We have a sample in our pipette. We'll load it into our first well. Just put the end of your pipette just over the well and press once to release it. Let's do another one of those. So press it down, put it into your food dye, release, it draws up the food dye into the pipette tip. Put the pipette tip over the well, press once to release it, and then let go. bit messy but that's okay. Now we need to fit the top of our the lid of our chamber on. It's black to black, red to red. And hook this up to our power supply. Okay, so you've got your lid on, you've connected your leads to your power pack. Black to black, red to red. Turn your power pack on make sure that the voltage is set to 100 which it is and we'll press run you can tell that it's working because you'll start to see bubbles forming at the cathode and also at the anode Okay, I'm going to stop it there. You can see that the process is working, that the gel, that the dye is moving through the gel, and I want to stop the process now. So I'll press stop. And be very careful not to touch anything until the power pack is turned off and disconnected from the wall. Safety first. Disconnect it from the power pack. Let's take our lid off and have a look at our gel. You can see that the colours have started to move from the uh, cathode to the anode through the gel and that the different colours have started to separate from each other. And the longer you let it run, the further they'll go through. If we let it go for another 20 minutes or so, probably be pretty close to the end of the journey.